Right, so we're going to start by casting on seven stitches. So anywhere on your machine, it doesn't really matter. Um, so we're going to loop the yarn. This is just a bit of scrap waste yarn. I'm going to loop it around the first needle. Then we're going to crank the machine to bring up the next needle. And we're going to go behind that one and in front of the next one. So that's three. And we're just going to continue going in front, behind, in front, behind for seven needles. So that's four, five, six. And then the seventh needle, we're just going to drop the yarn in there. And then we're going to continue cranking until this machine, until this needle disappears. So just make sure it catches the yarn there. And there it goes, disappeared down inside there. Then you're going to crank back around. To pull that down there. Then you're going to attach your working yarn and I'm going to put mine. Mine is an iron weight yarn so I'm going to go through the middle loop here for tension. Um, I have a video on tensioning and um, which I'll link up at the top if you're not quite sure which tension you prefer. Okay and then we're just going to start cranking and um, as we're not doing full rounds the counter on the centre won't actually mark anything so I just have one of these little um, digital counters um, and it just slots on your finger like so um to speed things up what i actually do is um i'm just going to count 10 rows and then just click this once and then i know once i've got 10 on here that's 100 rows okay so let's go back the way we came make sure that the yarn goes under the first needle So this is the final needle. I'm just going to pull this around just to make sure that it doesn't fall out. Make sure the yarn goes under here. And then we are going to keep cranking until the working yarn, in this case is the red yarn, goes underneath this little, um, I don't know what you would call this, this little pin here. Okay, so down we go. And can you see it's going down, 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 and there. It's popped underneath there. Okay, so that means we're finished, and now we can go back that way. So that was one. Now we're going to head back, so you can see the yarn has curled around this little pin here, and that's what's providing the tension and making sure that it goes under this needle here. And once it's hooked, what you want to do, you can see it's just popped off there. You just want to give it a little, so I'm going to tug on my yarn here so you can see. See, it's loose here, and I'm just going to give it a little tug just to pull that tight. And that's what's going to give us the knots and the stripes um, for when we're attaching this later. Okay, so back the way we came. Just pulling everything tight to make sure nothing falls off. And under this last needle, keep going until this drops behind this pin. There we go. And now I can go back the way I came. Keep going until it drops off again and give my yarn a tug. Okay, so then we're just going to continue doing that for um, 100 rows. Sometimes you might find um, that the yarn gets stuck here. As you can see, I'm trying to crank, but it's just not working. So what you need to do is you just need to push this down here like that so it wraps around those um, little uh, guides there. Okay, so we're now ready to cast off, so I'm just going to chop my yarn and pull it out of the guide and just drop it in the centre there. And then I'm going to get some more waste yarn 
and just pop it on a darning needle. Okay, and then I'm just going to crank the wheel with nothing in the guide. Okay. I'm just going to make sure that the yarn is wrapping around these two little pins that stick up. Now we're just going to use um, a darning needle to pick this up. So what I like to do is I just like to hold the final stitch just because sometimes that one likes to pop off so I'm just going to stick my finger over it there and then just going to go through and pick up each stitch. Go. Pull that through. And now she's free. So now what you want to do is repeat all of that again. So then you have two of these strips, 100 uh, stitches long and seven stitches wide. Okay, so now it's time to make the cabled um, headband bit of the hat and um, so I'm actually starting at one this time and um, we're only going to cast on 28 so I mean you can start anywhere in the machine um, but I'm going to start at one so again I'm just going to wrap my yarn around that needle I'm going to go to in front and behind for and um, we want 28 but I'm going to do 29 just because it's an odd number all right so I'm at 29 now so I'm just going to drop my waist yarn in there like that, continue going just to get that to wrap around there. Okay, and then I'm going to grab some working yarn. Okay, so I'm using the same colour and I'm just going to slot that in there into the tension guide. Um, okay, and then we're going to do one row just to get back around to the start. So again, make sure it catches under that first needle, which is number 28. And around we go. Okay, and we've hit one, so I'm just going to keep going until we drop below that pin there. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to start doing the cabling. Um, and we've got 28 needles on here that's going to be folded in half so what we're going to do is we're going to start the cables at number three and they're going to be 10 stitches long okay so go back around until we lift needle number three okay, so you're going to grab one of your strips and as you can see here you should have seven stitches over the the waist yarn so it's one two three, four, five, six, seven. But we're only gonna take up five stitches. So what we're gonna do is the first two and the back two, we're gonna put both of those on one needle. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna start at number three, which is this needle here. And a good way to remember it is we want the nice side on the inside. So I'm just gonna hold it up like that because this is how the cable's gonna be built just to make sure that I'm attaching it the right way. So I'm going to grab these two end stitches here and I'm just going to loop them over needle number three here. There we go. Okay, so that's got two, two loops over. Then we're going to go to needle number four, attach the next one. Needle number five. Needle number six. Okay, and then needle number seven, we're going to put these both of these stitches onto that one. Okay, so that's the first one attached. The next one's going to attach at needle number eight and then the next five needles after that. So again, just grab it, make sure you can count seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wonderful. OK, 
again we want it to look like that when we're finished so these two go on that side let's bring up number eight and put those on there number nine number ten Eleven, oh, she doesn't want to stretch that far. Hmm, don't be awkward. Bring up number twelve. Number 12 should have both on, because that's our final one. There we go. So we started needle three, so we skipped two, and that's 10. Now have these um, attached. So now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna finish my row. I'm not doing anything special. Okay. Back down again, we're just gonna make sure that we loop over this pin boom and that's finished so we can turn around and again just wait for it to fall off the pin again and pull that tight when we head the other way sometimes uh, when we come back to this bit because they've got too many loops on you might have to just give them a little bit of a shove mine seem to be all right there you go can you see this one's being a little bit difficult so you can either use a loom pick and knock it down or you can just shove it down from the inside which sometimes i find is a a little bit easier let's see if we get any more stuck yep and that final one's just been a little bit difficult so i'm just gonna um give that just a little tug from the back side just to push that down and it's not working so i'm gonna grab my loom pick and just pull it down there we go Maybe a deep breath. <laughs> okay, and then back round to number one. Which is just like when we were doing the little strips, just need to push that down a little bit sometimes. Okay, and then we've finished. Okay, so these are all nice and attached. So then we're gonna just knit normally until we hit row number 14. So I've just finished row 13, so this is going to be row 14. This is where we're going to want to do that cross. Okay, so we're going to need some stitch markers. So let's come around to needle number three. There we go, we've got needle number three up. Now what we want is we actually want the far, we want this far piece to be attached to needle number three. But we want to have... Um, seven stitches and um, so the way but okay so we've just knit 14 rows so we want to um, attach row number 14 on here and the way we do that is we count seven bars so each row um, is a bar and a knot so if we count seven bars that'll be 14 rows so one two three four five six seven so i'm just going to add a stitch marker in there and then i'm going to count another seven you don't have to do this all at once i just find it easier to do it all and i'm not going to use too many stitch markers there's only one cable so one two three four five six seven so it also gives me a chance to bring this closer to the camera so I can show you exactly what I'm counting. So um, I'll try and put some graphics on the screen here to really sort of highlight what I'm showing you here. Um, but if you look at the side of the, the yarn here, can you see we have a long strip followed by a knot, then a long strip 
followed by a knot and a long strip. So it's these long strips we're counting. So this is a nice long strip here. Can you see? And then it attaches to this knot. So then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to put a stitch marker in here. Go. So I'm going to do that for this side and this side, then we'll attach them. I'll show you how to do that. And then we're just going to do the same on the other side. So I'll meet you back once we've got all these stitch markers on. Okay, so I've got all my stitch markers in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this green marker. So we want the furthest cable, but the closest um side of it and we're just gonna loop that over there use the stitch marker to pull the stitch okay and then i can take that stitch marker out and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna count five so that's one two three four five so needle number seven that's where we're gonna put this purple marker so i'm just gonna grab that stretch it over and loop it onto that needle, then take the stitch marker out. Okay, and then we want to do the same with the first strip that we attached. So again, I'm just going to count up um, seven, seven strips um, and put a stitch marker. Okay, so I've got my stitch markers in there now, so I'm going to crank the machine to lift up needle number eight. And we're going to attach this stitch onto here. Okay, and then count five needles. So that was number one, two, three, four, number five. So that's needle number 12. And just attach that on there. Okay, and now you've done your first cross, so we're just going to finish the row. There we go. And that looks like a hell of a mess, <laughs> um, but it will look pretty um, once it's all stretched out. Okay, so we're just going to do normal stitches until we hit row 28, and then we'll do another cross. Okay, so I've just finished row number 27. So this is going to be row number 8. So 28, sorry. So this is the one where we're going to cross again. So go back to needle number 3, this one here. I'm going to grab the furthest um, strip, but the closest yarn marker, and we're just going to loop it over that needle. Ooh, remove the stitch marker. Then we're going to go to needle number seven or five if we're counting the needles. Okay, and then we're going to loop that one over there and raise needle number eight. Grab this strip and pop that on there. Then we're going to go around to number 12. And pop that one over there like that. Okay, and then we just finish the row as normal. Okay, and then we're going to do the next one at 42. So again, we're at row 41, so 42, we want to do a cross, so go along, raise needle number 30, attach your strip, on to number 7, and attach the strip, and 
number eight. Let's take a sneak peek at what it's turning out like. Well, it looks good. Happy with that. Okay, so you're just going to continue that pattern. I'm um, doing 14 rows in between, and then we're going to cross at rows 56, 70, 84, and 98. I will put all this in the description box um, as well. Um, so just continue doing that. And I'll meet up with you at row 98. Okay, so I've just finished row 97. So I'm going to do row 98. So it's going to be the final um, join. So let's go up to number three. And we're attaching the last ones. And go. Well, they attached the wrong one. We need to cross, don't we? So, grab the far one. Getting okay, all excited to finish. <laughs> okay, so that's number three. And we want number seven. Number eight. And then we're going to finish the row and that'll be number 98 and then um, we'll just do two more normal rows. Okay, so that's 100 rows. Um, ideally, I would say leave a long train because uh, we're going to um, attach these together with a Kitchener stitch, but... <laughs> That's the end of my ball. <laughs> we'll see if I can attach it with this amount of yarn, um, but ideally leave a bit more of a tail than that. Um, I would say one, one round of your machine should be enough. I don't know if that's gonna be enough, but we're gonna try. Um, so let's just cast off. So to cast off, we're just gonna um, go around with no yarn in the carriage and put some waste yarn um, on a needle, so I'll just do that now. Okay, so, crank around. And just like when we were casting off the strips, just want to put your finger on that final stitch just to make sure it doesn't bounce off. Okay. And she is free. Okay, so now we've got our lovely cabled fabric here. Um, and what we need to do is we, we need to get this into a tube. So Turn it over and then what we're going to do is we're going to bring this side and this side together. Okay. And we're going to join this with a Kitchener stitch but um, I've never done that on the pearl side before so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to join them this way. <laughs> so that I can uh, do it the way that I know how. Okay, so 
There's the tail. I'm going to spin this around um, because I'm right handed. I like to go right to left. Left handers might want to go that way. Um, I will put a picture on the screen of what Kitchener Stitch looks like. Um, I'm not great at a uh, joining techniques just yet. Um, but I will try and explain what I'm going to do. So hopefully you have a longer tail than I do. I'm just going to thread this onto my needle here. I don't know how clear this is going to be with me doing it um, with the yarn that's matching. Um, if you do want me to do a tutorial, um, just let me know. And I can do it with contrasting yarn instead. Um, okay. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to go... So mine is at the top, so I'm going to go into the bottom stitch first. And you want to make sure that the bottom stitch isn't twisted. So can you see here how I'm like pulling it up to make sure that it's not twisted? And then I'm just going to come in from the back. Because if you look at the stitches underneath, that's what they do. Can you see how the yarn comes in from the back, this bit here? coming in from the back to the front so we're just going to do that kind of come in from the back to the front pull that up okay. and then what we want to do is again make sure these two stitches on this beige colored yarn are not twisted and again you can see how this is going from above the yarn is coming up and coming through behind the two legs. So we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna come up here and we're gonna come behind these two legs here. Come down. And then we're gonna go back into the stitch that we just came from. Which is the one with the green yarn through there. I'm so sorry this is hard to see. <laughs> Hopefully from the picture that's on the screen you can see what I'm sort of trying to achieve here. Okay. So that's one stitch. So then we're just going to repeat that again. So I'm going to lift up the next stitch. Make sure it's not twisted. Come in from the back. To the front come up and find the two corresponding legs so that's this one and this one and I want my yarn so I get confused just try and follow what you can see is happening from up here so looks like it's going up there in there and then back into the stitch where I started okay so once I've made it further along it's a little bit easier to see what I'm doing so we're going to start in the bottom stitch with the green piece of yarn we we'll pull the stitch up to make sure that it's not twisted and then we're going to come from the back to the front, pull the yarn up, then I'm going to pull these two stitches together and what we want to do is we want to go through, join the legs, so can you see this stitch here, it's only got one leg coming through it, all stitches need two legs, so this one needs another leg, so we're going to go from the front to the back and then from the stitch next to it again make sure it's not twisted i'm going to come from the back to the front so can you see how we're looping these stitches together okay and then we're going to go back down into the stitch with the green yarn through it Pull the yarn out. You 
can see this loop here is the one we've just created and it looks relatively seamless when we work our way along. Right, so once we've joined everything with um, a kitchen stitch, so this is what you should be left with. I've joined these in the same way I joined the back. Um, I think next time I probably wouldn't attach the strips the way I did, um, but it looks fine. So there you go. I don't think you would ever know that that wasn't always one piece. So now what we're going to do is um, we're going to fold this in half. So we can see the lovely cabled bit there. And we want to have the cable bit facing the white bit of the machine. And what we're going to do is we're just going to attach it onto the machine. So again, we're going to attach it with the, the long um, strips here. So I'm going to start at one and I'm going to attach, you want to attach them from both sides. So pop that over there. Try and make this as level as possible. Go, so that's both on. And next one. Okay, so we're attaching the bottom bit, then the top bit. I'll work my way around and speed that through for you guys. Okay, so now she is all attached. So now what we're going to do is just gonna swing around to needle number one. And so we're just going to put our uh, working yarn back in there and then we're going to do 30 rows. Rose complete, just check nothing's slipped and fell. Okay, so we're just gonna uh, cast this off now. Okay, so be sure to leave a really long tail. Pull this hat tight underneath so I can see what I'm doing. And we're just going to tack a couple of stitches in there just to close up that hole. Again, I'm just going to bury the yarn inside the hat, turn it inside out, and we're just going to loop through some and loop through again. Ooh. I'm going to tie that into a knot. 
and chop off the excess. And there we go. We now have a lovely beanie. The cabled rim. I think once you block this, it will look a lot better. So I'm going to go uh, block mine and then I'll show you some shots of it once it's all blocked and looking pretty.